What's up guys, today we're talking about the CompTIA A Plus 220-1001 and the 1002. Um, I just want to start off by saying this video has been a long time coming. I was talking to some of my friends, they were telling me that I have to get my backdrop perfect, I have to get my lighting right, and all this different particular stuff, and uh, you know what, I decided that I gotta work with what I got. The fact of the matter is, I live in this little apartment, I got this uh, ugly little door right behind me, it's got two chain locks on it. One of these things doesn't even do anything, it's kind of just there. So, you know what, let's just do it. Let's make this video, you know, it's all about the content anyway, and I have all this stuff that I've been wanting to bring to you guys for a while now, so here it is. There was a lot of confusion for me if I was going to start with my A+, or pretty much what certificate I was even going to start with in the first place. I had watched a lot of videos, I had asked a lot of people, and they were pretty much telling me if you're going to get into security, you should just start with the Security Plus, see how you like it, and go from there. And while I do have some experience with computers, I used to, I don't know, modify Xboxes. I've experienced building computers, you know, laptops, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, it's, it's been a little bit. It's been a few years. I started getting through the lessons and they were talking about the M.2 form factor using NVMe over the PCI Express for the new SSDs that they have. I had no idea what that was. And if you have no idea what I was just talking about right now, it might be a good idea to look into the A+. Maybe, maybe not. I understand that time is a factor and um, you know, I'm a busy person. I work full time, you know, I've got a daughter and I have many other responsibilities and commitments that I have to attend to. So come to find out that the laptop that I'm using right here actually uses the M.2 form factor SSD. I had no idea. I'm so glad that I learned that in the A+, along with a lot of other stuff. So I went with the CompTIA Certmaster Learn their full package bundle that they have on their website. The reason that I went with this, it is not the cheapest by any means option out there. There's a lot of different resources when it comes to material for studying for certifications like this one. At the time that I decided to that I was going to go with the A+, I was looking online and the 220-901 and 902 were just getting phased out and replaced with the 220-1001 and the 1002. And because of that, when I was looking for the material for the new um updated exam there wasn't too much of it so me this being my first exam i thought what better place to get study material than from the creators of the exam themselves comptia so i went to the website i looked at their bundles i got the package that included an exam uh voucher also a retake it comes with the cert master learn package guys i just gotta say this is not the cheapest choice out there the package that i bought came out to around twelve hundred dollars there are Udemy courses for about $10.99 when you catch them on sale, and um, I am all for Udemy. Uh, I just passed my Network Plus using a $10 Udemy course and a $10 practice exam course, and that was all that I needed, really. But like I said, there was not too much material out there before I decided to go for this one, so you know what, you live, you learn. I actually really did like the Certmaster Learn. It comes with a whole comprehensive thing where you set your date of when you wanna take your test and then you start working towards it and it has the percentage of your progress like while you're getting there. They come with lessons. At the end of each lesson is a 10 question quiz just to see if you are knowledgeable of the material that we just covered in that lesson, which was really helpful to me because you know, sometimes it's that little confidence booster that the lesson that you just got through, you know, you got it and you're good. And all <laughs> other times it shows you that really there was no understanding whatsoever. So you got to go through it again. And it was helpful because it tells you exactly what you missed and what you need to work on, what you need to go back to. On top of that, they have performance based questions after every lesson. And those are very helpful because um, if you've done any research, you know that there are performance based questions on the exam itself. Some people call them simulations. Either way, the, the Cert Master Learn provides some that are, are pretty similar to the ones that are on the exam, and it was really helpful to be able to go through that. The Cert Master Learn website itself has a mobile browser that you can use on your phone. I would be at work on my lunch breaks, you know, whenever, just flipping through these lessons, and it all depends on like how your style of studying is. If you like just like flipping through and reading, you know, it was, it was really good because there were times where I didn't have the patience to sit through a video, but I did have maybe one or two minutes that I could just read through some lessons and that and it was perfect for me you know every moment that i had in order to open up my phone open up these lessons and start reviewing some stuff whether it was flashcards or the lesson that i was on or a previous lesson that i had to go over again i did it you know all the time and i stuffed it into my time on top of all that they have a, a final assessment which is supposed to be a somewhat of a mock to the exam that you're going to be taking at the end of all of it it's 90 questions 90 minutes long there aren't actually any performance-based questions in it so 
during your studying if you are using this for master learning you got to go through those performance based questions a few times and keep getting them what i did like about it was that they don't give you the right answers so you really do have to get in there and study if you missed anything for those questions in particular also what i like on the final assessment if you miss anything they don't only tell you what the correct answer was or that you got it wrong they give you a list on every single answer of why that answer isn't correct they have flashcards in a game center the game center really is just throwing the flashcards in all sorts of weird different ways I did use the flashcards, you know, they were good. You get to flip it over, find out what the actual answer is, whatever. It's flashcards. There's not much to explain there, but the game center. So they use these flashcards and what they do is they take the definition directly from the lesson that it came from, which is uh, it not very helpful because for example, one of them was on the top, you got a flashcard. It says ESD. So now you have six options, six definitions below it and you got to choose the right one and you got a limited time to choose it. And if you glance over all these questions, there's in the very beginning of some of them it has a parenthesis and it says electrostatic discharge now if you're anything like me and you see esd and in parentheses you see some words that begin with an e and s and a d that's the first thing that you're going to go for and because if they take it directly from the lesson it has it right in there so it's really hard not to see those in the parentheses at the very beginning and it's not very helpful to go through it just answering the questions and seeing what it is already but i just gotta say if you are using the CompTIA cert master learn in order to study for your exam and you're wondering if it's enough material if you're wondering if you need to take other practice tests or some other side material professor messer on youtube you know i know he's good i use him a little bit when i'd be driving around just to get some audio you know like right up before my test but if the only thing that you're using is the cert master learning and you're wondering if it's enough content, if it's enough material for you to pass the test, absolutely. Yes, 100% it's enough. This is what I used and I was able to get through the test. Okay, so let's get into test day. For my 1001 on the drive over there, this was my very first IT exam and um, I was nervous to say the least. And when I got there, you know, they did the whole thing, took my picture, got me in that exam room and uh the first thing that they hit me with was a performance based question you know i started dragging and dropping and uh it just started to get to a point where it was like it started to frustrate me you know so i went to the next one and if i can give you any tips guys do not get stuck on a question get through it because by the end of the exam i was running out of time and there were a few answers that i had to rush through and that's not something you want to do on top of that my personal experience has been i ran into a question that i had no idea what they were talking about and not too many questions later on in the exam in the question itself it stated right there exactly what i needed to know for the question previous to that i'm not going to say that's going to happen very often but it does happen you know it happened for me and that you don't want to waste too much time because at the end you're going to see how many questions you have left and you don't want to rush through them because you might run across a question that you know right away and there might be another one that you just really don't know and there might be some that you just absolutely don't know at all so if you're going to sit there trying to figure out what it is you're wasting time for points that could be made on the rest of the exam so about halfway through i had accepted my fate that I was going to fail the exam. Honestly, that's what I thought. I was not even done with my exam yet and I had already decided I was questioning my career choice. I was like wondering what am I going to tell all these people that I've been getting pumped about how I'm going to get into this field of IT and cybersecurity and I don't even know what I'm talking about and I'm about to fail this test. I'm going to have to go back, study all this stuff, take it again. I know it was a little extreme, but that's just where my head takes me. When I got to the end of the exam, like I said, it was maybe the last five questions. I slightly had to rush through them, but I got them all answered. I tried to review some of the ones that I flagged. That's the other thing. If there's a question that you don't know, flag it, move on to the next one. That is the best thing that you can do because you can at the end of your exam review all those flags so i had a chance to review some of the flags that i was looking over um what i didn't want to do was second guess and go over the questions that i already answered your best bet is if you are looking at it give it your best shot answer it once and then that's it you know i didn't want to second guess myself and then run the chance of getting that answer wrong after that so i got to the end of my exam i used every last minute that they gave me and then I'm flipping through and it gives me this questionnaire, you know, asking me about where I got the exam, like who paid for it, all this stuff. My heart is pumping. I, I really do not care about anything they're asking me. I'm trying my best to click the, click the responses and get through it. And then you have that, that one, one more button to click before they tell you if you passed your exam or not. And like I said, I had accepted defeat. I knew I was going to fail. I was just gonna, waiting to see how bad I actually failed. I clicked that button and lo and behold, I passed. I couldn't believe it. I was almost in tears. I was absolutely ecstatic. I did not 
see that coming guys like absolutely did not see that coming i got out of that test center i think i got like a 7 30 something like that drove home you know calling all the people like how excited it was how my experience was and that's just one of the things guys like at least for me my head likes to trick me into thinking that i'm not capable of as much as i actually am you just got to take the time take the patience you know my head likes to talk a lot of crap to me but you just keep pushing through it anyway putting in the time putting in the effort when you can so that was for the 1001 um for my 1002 it was a little bit more difficult than the 1001 because the 1001 was a lot more hardware and basic stuff yeah when i got into my 1002 I'm gonna be honest with you, I wanted to get through it. I was struggling when it came to some of the things like permissions and directories and stuff like that. I knew that I had a retake, so I just went in, I scheduled it, and then I wanted to get an idea of what the test was gonna look like so that I could come back, study, and then take it with my retake. When you purchase the exam bundle, if you have a retake, you don't get that money back, so you might as well try to do it anyway. I went in, I almost had the same experience. I started getting through it. I was a little bit more comfortable than the last one just because I had the experience of taking the test once before. And I'm gonna be honest with you, even this time when I was pressing that button to see if I passed the exam or not, I was really unsure if I was going to, but you know, sure enough, I made it, barely. The passing score was 700. I think I got a 704. Literally, if I missed one more question, I would have got it wrong. Guys, I don't recommend that. Unless you have a retake on you, then yeah, that might be a good idea so you can get an idea of what the test looks like and you can go back and study. But if you're putting in that 300 something dollars and you only have this one shot, study, study, study. Get it all in there. You don't want to waste the time of going in there. You don't want to waste the money of going in there either. So yeah, guys, that was my experience with both the exams. Um, that was my experience with Cert Master Learn. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, um, please leave it in the comments. I know there's a lot of stuff that I didn't cover as far as both of the exams. If you guys have any questions, you can also contact me on my Instagram. You know, send me a message. It's Zero Day James. I'm pretty active on there. Again, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And yeah, I'll see you next time.